I'm Natara Tangler, and you have arrived at day 67 of the 100 Days of Zentangle Project 2020. Y'all are wonderful for being here with me for the last two months, and we are going to be starting on our last month or 33 days together, the last third of our project. Uh, and I am thrilled to have you guys with me. Thank you so much for making this such a joy to do. Uh, thank you to my friend in Canada for the wonderful gift from Zentangle today. I am so blessed to have people like you guys um, really thinking of me. I got um, a big, huge set of PNs and um, um, another pack of colored PNs, as well as she sent me a, a lot of Zendala and uh, Prentice tiles, and um, I just can't thank you enough for that wonderful gift. Thank you, my Canadian darling. All right, so our tangle today is called Tint. It is by German CZT Hein Henrike Bratz, and uh, she has a new blog out that has the story of these uh, of this tangle, and uh, I suggest that you guys check her out. It is a wonderful thing. It is in German, and uh, so I really enjoyed it. And she's got some videos up in German, which are very cool. So uh, check it out. All right. I have chosen Tint because it is a ribbon tangle, but it has a ton of different uh, possibilities for it. And let me show you just a couple of those. Uh, this can be drawn... This can be drawn in um, a ribbon... It can also be a blossom tangle, which she has a be some beautiful examples on tangle patterns uh, or on her step out. And it also can be, uh, can look uh, completely different depending on how you vary it. So let me step it out for you real quickly. Yeah. All right, I'm going to use a string today because this is a string friendly tangle because it has so many different variations. So I'm going to use my four dots, but today I'm going to move them in towards towards the middle. Let me make these darker. I noticed uh, when I watched uh, a couple of videos that, a couple of my videos, that uh, the strings aren't very dark. And so depending on what device you're using to watch them, uh, I don't know how well you're seeing them. I, I um, played some on my Roku today. I streamed it to the TV and uh, I really had trouble seeing the string lines on there. So I don't know if you guys are having trouble with that or not. But I'm going to start with four dots in the corners. And while I connect my corners, on each side, I'm going to take a deep breath as I draw in through the nose, out through the mouth, in through the nose, out through the mouth, in through the nose, and out through the mouth. Drop your shoulders down, relax. I think I'm definitely going to use a Maria Thomas loop today. I do love my Maria Thomas loops. And then, let me think. Uh, let's see, it's a ribbon tangle, but it's got some blossom possibilities. So I want to leave some room for those. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is, um, curve a ribbon here a little bit, and then leave these other sections open for something else. So Let's see where that gets us. Let's start with the basic tangle today, okay? And that's what I'm going to put up in this ribbon. So you want to start with a series of orbs, okay? And you don't want them to be too small uh, or too large. Actually, you can do what you want. Do what you want, that's what I always say. Do what you want. For me, I'm going to <laughs> start with some large-ish orbs. Oh, guys, I make myself laugh. I don't know that it's really funny, but I make myself laugh. Okay, so I'm going to put these uh, orb-like things, and I'm going to leave a little distance. 
between them because we're gonna draw something in between. Okay, and I can start at whatever end I want to. So I think I'm gonna start over here and go up. So the next step after the orbs is we're going to draw a teardrop shape like a flux stroke right here. It's going to touch the uh, orb above it and then we're gonna bring it back down just like this, okay? Now we're gonna do one on the other side, but we're gonna tuck it in behind the one we just drew, like this. We're gonna take this stroke up, just like we would normally do. I'm gonna tuck it in behind there, all right? And the last two steps, well, then we wanna aura our orb, okay? And then, of course, the last step will be to draw an aura around the whole thing. So now, let's take on the next one. It is fine to let them curve out. Just like that. Do my orb auras and move on to the next. Okay, flux stroke. Touch the bottom of the orb. Curve back around, do the other side. Tuck it in behind. Aura your orb. Okay. A lot of straight pin strokes here. By the way, sorry about my double intro yesterday. I can't believe I left that in. I usually get those out, but occasionally you hear something uh, that should have been removed and I apologize for that. Sometimes it takes me three or four times to introduce this thing. All right. All right, this is our basic pattern. And now we're going to R this all the way down, okay? Well, I didn't mean to do that. Question is, can I undo it? Well, remember, if you get a pin stroke that was not what you intended, don't freak out. There was a time when I would have thrown my tile away when I made mistakes like that or what I considered mistakes. And it's important to keep going. Don't prejudge your outcome and decide it's not worthy. Okay, so this is your basic pattern, and it's not all that exciting, but it can be really cute when it's shaded. So let's explore a couple of the variations for this. Uh, I think I definitely want to put my blossom over here, or at least a blossom. Maybe I wanna put that over here where I have more room. So let's do the, the blossom form of this, and let me show you how that goes, okay? This is more of a singular entity, okay? You could, you can do this uh, in rows, I suppose. Uh, but I'm going to start this one, do a single one and see how that goes. Um, now one of the, one of the options, options she has in her step out is to, instead of using flux here, use mucus strands. And that was interesting, so you guys can try that. 
I may do an example of that, I don't know. Okay, now, for the blossom version, what we're going to do is we're going to make echo lines here that are even larger, that are going to get larger and spread out, okay? Let me see, <laughs> let me see if I can approximate what she's got here. So she is just adding echo lines out like this, okay? And you can make these as big or as small as you want. You can taper them down or leave them wide like this, and isn't that fun? And so if I wanted to put another entity here, you just add an orb. Now you could make these skinnier too. You don't have to make them big and wide like mine. That probably says something about me, but I don't care. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna do another one. and just drag each one of these lines in here. And if you run into something, just draw behind it like this. Yes, and so I love this form, not just because it has flux in it and echo lines, which I love. I think they give a cool effect and it's fun to shade. Now, aren't those cool? So I love those. Um, do I want to do a partial one up here? No. Now, she has also, in her example, taken these out of the um, ribbon framework and just put them in willy-nilly, sort of organically. And so let's try some of that and see how it goes. Okay, and so put another one here. And I love uh, tangles that you can take out of whatever form they're in and play with them in another form. That was one of the reasons I chose this because of all the different possibilities it presents. And so you can just draw them in organically, willy-nilly. Remember, willy-nilly means randomly. Oops. And then as you place them, you can fill in any gaps with orbs like we always do. Um, let's put another one over here. Maybe let it go behind. Okay. Pop another one back here, see if we can do it. Okay, and then the rest of that will be hidden. That was a little bit messy, that's all right. So when we get done, I have something to show you. I have, somebody asked me about, I was speaking about getting a magnified uh, light that I could use to draw through. And uh, I have one that I've had for years that I don't use very often uh, because you have to have it pretty close and the light isn't just tremendously bright on it. But uh, I'm drawing through it right now as we, as we tangle. And uh, it's working fairly well to really bring things up close for me. I can certainly see how messy my um, lines are. Again, that is something that I do finishing touch-wise uh, right at the very end is uh, fix my lines and, you know, go over them and do all the finishing touch stuff that I need to do. So where these blossom ones are coming together, I'm also adding orbs and, and uh, inking between. 
Okay, so that's fun. Whoops. Okay. All right. So, um, now let's do an example of a Mooka one. Okay. Let's put it over here in the corner. All right. And so I'm going to switch my flux, sh my flux shape. with a mooka strand and then like that okay and you could blossom out from there and this would be a great example of using Maria Thomas's flux Okay, so that's how you would do it if you were going to use flux or blossom out or whatever you wanted to do with that, okay? Um, the other example that she has is really cool, and it is, um, well, let's see if I can do it. <laughs> I think I'll point it the other direction, though, just for some interest here. I'm going to slow down and take my time with these orbs. They have gotten pretty sloppy. Okay. Now I think, I think I need to look at that again. Um, hang on, okay, so um, I didn't uh, do this one right, so I think I'm going to have to stick that example in some other way. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this the regular version. Well, that's actually more like what I was wanting to do, but. Uh, we'll just go for it. Okay, so on these, I think I'm gonna do something different. I think I'm going to black in around the orb, just for fun. See how it looks. Well, I kind of like that. It's very, uh, it's very stark and kind of bold, but I really like it. I really like that. I think that's going to look nice once I get it all cleaned up and fixed. Ooh, that's an idea. Let's round the edges here. If I can do that without making a huge mess, let's do that.
I love experimenting. It's one of my favorite parts of this. Sometimes they don't work out, sometimes they do, and that's awesome. That's why God made sketch pads, guys. <laughs> to try out all your ideas. And if you have ideas, I want you to try them. That is awesome. Okay, I really like this version. Once we get the aura around it, we'll put a cool aura around this, maybe. That'll give me a chance to clean some of this up. Make it look a little bit more co cohesive. Thank you guys all so much for your support of this project and of me. I really, really appreciate it. I know it for the gift that it is. And it, your time is a gift that you give me every day. And I appreciate you. All right. Let's do an aura around this. But let's make this one a little bit different. Let's start with... this one around and then I'll do the same thing on the other side that'll give us something a little bit different to look at I hate when I do opposite sides like that it never the curl the little curly cues never work out right So that's interesting, maybe a little more interesting than I had, had looked for, but we're going to make it work. Alright, so now, got a big mishmash, I love these by the way, I love, love, love them. I want to do more of those. Um, let's put a few more of these little mukas in here. Well, <laughs> not my best work. And here, here in a minute, I'll figure out some way to sort of uh, mesh all of these uh, into this um, tile. Let's uh, figure out what else we can do here. Without making too big a mess. And I still have a variation I wanna show you on this. Mm. Muka one isn't my favorite, but it is different, and we could stripe these. I mean, a little stripe and a sparkle might be okay here. Like that. Okay, and I actually don't mind that at all. So let's do this one. Okay. 
goodness. I'm just going to black this in. That was not working out. All right, well, let's put another mooka over here. I've sort of lost my mooka. Okay, again, not my favorite spot, but a jelly roll will help this a lot. All right, now, this other one, maybe I can go a little bit smaller, ignore my string, and stick it in here. So, this is how she does that one. What she does is she makes the first orb smaller and blacks it. And I'm going to leave my little highlight on there. Then she makes her secondary uh, um, uh, flux shapes really go wide. Then she does her aura lines. And then I think after two, she blacks. here okay so let me put in some more that was too big wasn't it well we'll try it well I can't get the edges of these rounded for anything today can I all right and let's do these wide well that was interesting but that's okay This is more truly like a crescent moon. Okay, despite the messiness, not so bad. By blacking that initial orb, it really gives, it really sets it off well. And she's got this little jewel look by the, that time. Which is very pretty. Let's put a few more of these, sort of fill up this space. And remember, the key to this is making your initial orb smaller and blacking it in and then making your flux shapes really wide so you've got extra room inside for auras. And then she sets these up, blacks the top, I believe, I could be wrong, like this. Oops. Once again, getting that too big. didn't leave much aura room here, but it's going to be okay. The aura on this is pretty cool as well. I'm really having trouble with those today. Okay, now let's black this. And put one more in. I think I can fit one more in. Small orb to start. And bring them out wide. Add your auras in. 
black the top. Now the outer aura on this is really pretty. What she has got is um, the standard aura, and then I believe she surrounds this with little orbs, which makes very pretty. And I think the orbs are blacked. It's tough not to be able to look at the example while I'm drawing this, but something like this. Okay, all the way up. It's a little work intense, but it'll be it'll give a great effect. And of course, I'm going to put my little highlights in. You do not have to. I just think the little black orbs are the most dynamic when they've got that little highlight on them. I'll have to jelly roll those last two. And then she could have put an additional R around here. I don't think I'm going to do that. I sort of like the sort of free stuff that, that we can do however we want. And I can do that. So that's what I'm going to choose to do. It really makes, this version really makes an elegant look. Her version is much nicer than mine, I'll say that. Okay, now I'm gonna put the aura on the other side. I'll definitely need my jelly roll for this. Okay. put orbs in over here. Any of them that I don't get the highlight in, I just come back through with my jelly roll and add a little dot and that works out really well. We need to do another black tile. I'm not sure if I have any black tiles left, any of my uh, black apprentice tiles. I may have a couple, but uh, I, I have a notebook of black paper that I can use. So I'll have to drag that out. There's so many things you can do on black that you may not be aware of, particularly with colored pencils, that uh, I love doing gems on gemstones on black uh, tiles. Those are fun. So um, we'll have to play around with that a little bit. I love coming up with stuff that you guys haven't done before. Or if you have and you really enjoy it, I'm glad to bring it back for you. Be sure and let me know in comments when you've got something that you want to try out or a comment that you want me to be aware of. Uh, I'm always listening for those. Um, okay, so I like this version. It's very ornate and elegant. Uh, I like this one, it's kind of funky. Uh, this one with shading isn't so bad. I absolutely am in love with the Blossom version of this. So uh, I'm going to look over here and see what I can do to sort of uh, connect these together. Now, what I can do is radiating auras. 
Um, these don't have any R lines, so I can definitely add them there. Oops, did not mean to do that. And I suppose I can black all of this. It will definitely bring it together, add a little drama. over here maybe I can do one right here and another element right here maybe I could do a small blossom I'm not sure it'd work but we can try it Okay, I like that, even though it's kind of stuck in there. Maybe I could put some more of those along here. I wonder how that would be. Let's find out. Don't wonder, find out. Okay. That's not bad. Oops. So that's kind of a pretty little fill. I like that. Uh, let's do a couple more. I definitely like those. I'm a big fan of that um, blossom version. And this is really elegant without the aura lines in the middle. So you might want to consider that. Uh, what can we do over here to sort of join this element with the rest of the tile? We've got a pretty busy tile. I don't mind leaving some blank space. I'm working on that, but I don't have a way, I haven't figured out a way to sort of tie this, this element in with the rest. So um, what one thing I could do would be to add another aura. Maybe a different one this time. That works pretty well, it looks good. Let's put it one on this side. <laughs> that was weird. Okay, well, that was a little wobbly there on the end, but okay. So this is definitely looking better. I think I need something in these spaces here, so I'm gonna draw in some orbs and carefully do some inking around them. Very carefully.
And then I think we will have our elements joined fairly well. There are so many times that I would have given up on this particular tile, but I really think it's going to turn out very well once I get all of my little messes cleaned up. So just sort of join up everything. Now over here, I think I'm gonna go off the reservation as we say around here and I'm going to do my own thing and I'm gonna put another blossom right here pointing out so where's the other two let's put it right here goodness all right let's black this And make careful lines, slowing down, then I'm going to come out here and make each of these a little bit larger. And then I'm going to get smaller. Take it all the way down to the edge of the aura beneath it. Nope, I have to go lower than that. Hmm. All right. All right, so let's zoom out and take a look at this ridiculous mess here that I'm actually thinking I'm going to like a lot once it's finished. Okay. So now I'm going to look at this and see if there's any more spots where I want to add an element. I think I want to put one in you over here. And another one over here, since we're doing the whole organic thing. You can mess with these flux shapes, make them tall, skinny, long, short, fat, whatever you want. Now, I don't want to black in here where I normally would black because of these little orbs. I want them to have some separation. I wonder if I did this and added an aura where I said I wasn't going to, if that would help. Probably not. So I think I'm going to leave those loose and not put any, not put any blacking in between. And uh, other than that, I've pretty much filled in everything. This is a new zero one. It's very juicy and it's and I've got stray lines everywhere with it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do this one out. 
and then I'm gonna draw what's left of this behind this other element. I'm gonna pretend it's there, but I know it's not. Like that. All right, so other than uh, fixing up some ink spots that I've got kind of out of control here and there, this is where I'm gonna leave the line work, at least for now. Uh, I may decide to come back in and add something else later, but I think this is where I wanna stop right now. Um, okay, let's talk about shading really quickly. Let me just grab a pencil, where is it? Okay. So for shading, one of the first places you're gonna to wanna to shade is the inside elements along these, uh, along these uh, flux shapes. I'm also going to put a little bit of color in sort of a crescent moon shape on the edge of my, on the edge of my orb, and I'm going to lift this out, this dot out, with my Mono Zero. This is a Tombow Mono Zero eraser. It is very small and perfect for this sort of situation. Since that's gonna mess with the shading on the other side, I don't want that dot there. Okay. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Just put a little crescent moon of color on the side. You can do it on whichever side you like. I always do mine on the left because I never get confused about it then, about where I'm putting it what. All right, get my tortillon that I just had here waiting. I'm telling you, these things are crazy, crazy. So once you shade this out or blend it out in sort of a rounded way on the side there. You're gonna have a nice looking, uh, more 3D-like orb. And just those little things make a big difference. Then when you shade on the inside, it'll drop that back and bring out the upper layers, okay? So the other place, when I've got large elements like this, these uh, blossom parts, um, and I have the ability to, I'm gonna shade between these right here just to set them off a little bit. Let me get my color right on the line, apparently other places too. Okay, just like that. And you don't need a lot. For some reason, this pen, this pencil is putting down a lot of graphite, and it's my F pencil, so it shouldn't be doing that, but we'll see how it turns out. That's why God made erasers anyway. If you get too much graphite, you can just lift it out, which is a nice quality. Something I appreciate about graphite. Okay, so let me blend this out for you. Wrong side. And show you what this does for you. Got a lot of graphite on there. Okay. Now, the other place, let's see. I don't want those pencil lines messing with my shading. I 
think we have pulled up the tooth in some spots with, with the, the scrubbing on the tortillon. Now, you can handle these larger elements with a lot of uh, concentrated shading. You can also put just a little bit up at the top in a half circle to sort of accentuate the roundness of these. Um, it's been a while since I've tried to do this, so let's see how it turns out. Let me just smudge it out a little bit. You don't want a lot of graphite up there, just a tiny bit. Not like that. I don't know that I particularly like that. I'll have to get away from it a little bit and see. Um, okay, that's not my favorite thing. I think I'll leave it for now and uh, we'll see what we come up with. I like it shaded just behind the elements, but you know, you can do as you wish. Now, um, that's how I'm going to pretty much handle my shading. It's going to be about the same for all of them. Of course, the areas where it is um, uh, less overlapping and all of that, it'll look a little bit different, but the shading is going to be essentially the same. Uh, on this one, you're gonna wanna shade right down here at the edges, okay? Um, same thing here, you'll do these single elements exactly like you've done these. Okay, and here I'm just gonna put graphite right down here where the lines are coming together. And again, I will go through and do a thorough pencil, um, a thorough shading layer and I will do several layers of shading. Um, that is one of the keys to shading well is to go at it in layers. So this is where I'm going to leave you today. I wanted to address one thing before we left, and that is this. I had a really good comment uh, two days ago on um, one of the videos that where we were talking about the music, the one with uh, Levo with Caden. Um, we were talking about music and copyright strikes and all of that kind of stuff. And I had a comment from someone, I'm sorry, I can't remember who it was that suggested that perhaps no music might be a better plan because, and this was her reasoning and it's very good reasoning, it is that um, when she pauses the video to catch up with me, that um, then she doesn't have music to tangle with. And if we didn't put music on, then that gives everyone the ability to, um, to listen to their own music during, during tangling and uh, not just what I have, and that gives you the ability to have the kind of music that you want. So uh, I was just wondering what you guys thought about that. I went ahead and did not put music in yesterday's video, and I really wanna hear from you guys in comments how you feel about music or no music. What do you think? And I will let you guys guide me. I thought the comment was very well thought out. She said she enjoyed my music, but but uh, missed it then when she paused the video. So I thought that was a good comment and I'm, and I'm considering uh, what you've said and, I'm, and I wanna know what everybody else thinks. So drop me a comment, let me know, and we will continue this discussion as we move forward. Thank you guys so much for being with me for these, for these uh, last 67 days. It has been so joyful for me to be able to share with you guys and have people that I feel like that I'm tangling, tangling with every day. And so I want you guys to know how much I love and appreciate each one of you. Thank you and greetings from Oklahoma to all of you all over the world. Mwah. Much love. <laughs>